Welcome to My Catholic Perspective. This week has been a little bit different in as much as I have been praying a daily rosary live on my Facebook page. And then over the course of the last two nights, I've had a couple different dreams that have been somewhat insightful. Um, two nights ago, I dreamt that I had gone to Planned Parenthood and I was like, I think I might be two weeks pregnant and I want to know what my options are. And there was this picture window where you could actually watch the doctors performing the abortion and I saw this one doctor you know bring one of the babies out and you could hear babies crying and he used one of those triangular hammers that they use on your knee for reflexes to like hammer at the baby's mouth to get it to shut up and like die and then there was another baby that was also killed um, and it was like there was just no way I could do it and then last night I had a dream where I actually witnessed um, the molestation of a like a little boy he was like three years old and the man was actually attempting to get to me as well and I was like locked myself in a closet he broke through the door like it was I was on the phone trying to call 911 like nightmare and um and through that though it's really brought me to this realization of how much the distortion of premarital sex has been in our society in aiding in the other sexual distortions that are happening. So the good news about sex and marriage with Christopher West, he wrote it, it's um, essentially insight on theology of the body by St. Pope John Paul II. And he is explaining how we have the spousal gift of our bodies for our spouse and ultimately understanding the importance of what what sex is all about because it says here God gave us sexual desire itself to be the power to love as he loves so that we could participate in divine life and fulfill the very meaning of our being and existence. And then he goes on to say, sounds great, but it's a far cry from the way sex plays itself out in the experience of real human beings. The historic abuse of women at the hands of men, the tragedy of rape and other heinous sex crimes, even against children, AIDS and a host of other sexually transmitted diseases, unwed mothers, fatherless children, abortion, adultery, skyrocketing divorce rates, prostitution, a multi-billion dollar pornography industry, the general cloud of shame and guilt that hangs over sexual matters. All of this paints a very different picture from the one St. Paul and John Paul II give us. So I've you know, posted a couple of my recent blogs on sexuality and what it means with theology of the body and I'm continuing my study there so it's going to continue to grow and I'm finding myself being very passionate about this especially coming you know Christopher West had a promiscuous teenage years like I was not always great and definitely made some choices that I wish I would have known the fullness of this and um, I have this dictionary of early Christian beliefs and I was curious what they might have to say about like pornography or anything like that there's actually only one quote in here from saint clement of alexandria that um is on pornography it's the only one there and he said it in 195 a.d and um essentially he's it, it's addressed to the pagans and he's talking to them about you know on the other hand what kind are your pictures diminutive pans naked girls drunken satires and philific tokens painted in naked pictures disgraceful for filthiness and he goes on and he's saying you know you're portraying these in public places rather you set them up and guard them with scrupulous care you consecrate these pillars of shamelessness at home as though they were the images of your gods then he says we denounce not only the use of them but also the very sight and mention of them so he, I, I love there at the end how he actually differentiates between use and sight. So, you know, all of it is denounced, all of it is not okay, but he actually goes a step further be beyond, like, you can't just look at them, you can't use them. And like, actually using a photo, I mean, Jason Everett has a ton of talks out about porn and like porn detox, and he talks about how some of these women that are actually in these pornographic images and videos they're actually already dead like they've died from a disease that they've contracted through the intimacies that they shared in the making of those photos or videos and so now there there's actually like people lusting after these women who are actually in the ground like how to it it, it blows my mind but so this idea that premarital sex is the gateway, you know, my husband refers to it as a slippery slope, that once one is pursued, then it opens the doorway for all these other sexual disorders. You can't kick God out without allowing 
the entryway for other evils to come forward and understanding that evil does not stand alone on its own it is the absence of good just as you know darkness is the absence of light darkness cannot stand on its own it's the absence of light just the same as evil is purely the absence of good so kick God out this is what we're gonna see I strongly encourage you to continue praying um, I'm doing my rosary 8:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Facebook page which is you know facebook.com forward slash my Catholic perspective you're more than welcome to join us there um, just continuing to pray for this pro-life generation that we might really take this step forward and be able to to make a difference in this world and make a difference in how we're treating each other how we're loving each other and how we can truly experience God's love in our relationships so God bless you all thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you again next week Sunday God bless <laughs>